What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp and Profile Builder tutorial for you. So um, I know Profile Builder has been on sale lately and so there's a lot of people um, that are just starting off with the extension. What I wanted to do is I wanted to make a video showing you how to get started with Profile Builder. So how you can use it to create different profiles and also different assemblies. So as far as I know, as of right now, Profile Builder is still on sale. So if you haven't gotten a copy of Profile Builder, um, you can still check it out in their Black Friday sale. You can find that link on my Black Friday deals page at the sketchupessentials.com slash Black Friday. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the first thing you need to understand inside of Profile Builder is the difference between profiles and assemblies. So profiles are basically shapes that get extruded along a path. So for example, if I was to select this jersey barrier and click on this first button, all we would do is just single click move our mouse and then click again. So it's very similar to what the follow me tool does, but with a lot more powerful options and things that you can change and adjust. So those are going to be profiles and those are basically gonna be things that are extruded um, in a direction. So you can also draw a path like this and then select a profile and click on this button right here and it'll extrude that object along the path. And so this will also work for multiple different paths. So let's say for example that I made a copy of several different lines and then I selected them. This would extrude that shape along each one of those paths and it would create an object for each one of those. So that's what profiles are and you can access other profiles by going inside the profile browser. So there's built-in profiles or by creating your own. On the other hand, assemblies are more complex than profiles because what assemblies are is assemblies are collections of both profiles and objects or components that are being placed inside of that object or objects that are being repeated. So for example, if we open this up and go into our assembly browser and we were to open something like, let's just go with our simple fence. So if we were to click on this button right here for build assembly and then single click, you can see how when we move our mouse and click again, this is automatically creating both a profile for the top and the bottom rail, as well as repeating a component. It's repeating a vertical component, which is making up your vertical supports that your fence is supported by. And so you can adjust the way these are set up by looking at your profile members and your components. So for example, let's say we wanted our fence post spacing to be a little further out. What we would do is we would adjust this to a different length. So we could select an object we could adjust our spacing and then click on the button right here for apply assembly attributes. You can see how what that would do is that would go back and that would adjust the attributes of the assembly with the new information. So if we wanted this to be something like four feet, we could just select this object, click on the apply assembly attributes, and then the vertical, the vertical component would be repeated every four feet based on the new information that we gave it. So we can use all of these different options in order to do different things with our, with our assembly. So for example, let's say I wanted to add another rail in here. So all we would do is we would just click the plus button to add another rail. And what that did is that duplicated the one that we had selected. And then we could adjust this with a different up down offset. So for example, let's say we wanted this to be taller. We could set this to be like 24 inches or um, you can see how you get you can see how you get a preview up here of the changes that we make. So let's say this was gonna be 18 inches or 20 inches. I'm just trying to get this uh, centered, but you can see how now I have three profile members in here. I have a top rail, a bottom rail, and the copy I created. And so now I can go back in here and click on the button for apply assembly attributes. And you can see how now that additional rail has been added inside of here. And so this is generally how Profile Builder is going to work. And I will link to some videos down below um, talking a little bit more about how each one of these tools works. But basically what you create is either going to be a profile or it's going to be a combination of profile members and components. And there's another feature in here for spans, which is a little more complex. I don't want to talk too much about that in this video because I want this to be more of an introduction. So the other thing I wanted to do was just show you how to add a profile and also how to create an assembly. And so let's say we wanted to create a simple assembly to add into our library. So let's say we wanted to create something like a pipe. And so the way, with the, the way that we would create a pipe is we would draw a shape in here representing the profile that we want this to be. So what I would do is I would create a circle, then I would offset this in using the offset tool. 
and then I would delete the center. Well, now what we have is we have a profile. And so you can tell something's a profile because it's closed in. And if you were to push pull it, it would have a shape to it like this. And so what we want to do now is we want to select this and click the plus button and we want to create a name. And so we can go ahead and just call this pipe. And so the pipe at this point has been sized a little bit big, but we'll go ahead and call this a pipe for right now. Well, you can see how what this has done is this took this profile that we had selected in here and it actually, um, and it actually looked at it and figured out what would make up the profile. So in this case, now that I have a pipe in here, I could click on the build button and then single click and click again and now my pipe is in here as a profile and so once you have this pipe kind of set the way that you want it to be so there's a few other things that you can set about this like the insertion point or the rotation or other things like that we're not going to worry too much about that right now um, but then once you've done all of this you can click on the button for save and you can save that inside of a library so you can create a library of different profiles that you can use later so that's how you can create a profile. And so once you save this profile, you'll have access to it later. And so now let's talk a little bit about creating an assembly. So for an assembly, let's go ahead and create something simple like a stud framed wall. So the way that we're gonna do that is if you think about a stud framed wall, it's basically a bottom plate and a top plate, which are profiles that are extruded along the length of the wall. And then you have studs that are added inside of your wall at a certain spacing. So what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a profile for our top and bottom plates. And then we're also going to need components that are gonna get, that are gonna get repeated inside of the wall. So to start off, let's go ahead and let's draw our bottom plate. So let's say for example, that this is going to have dimensions of, we'll say, 1.75 comma 5.75 I'm not sure if that's exactly the dimensions of a 2 by 6 but we'll go ahead and call it that for right now so we're just gonna select this we're gonna click the plus button and we're just gonna call this plate and so now we have an object in here that's gonna make up our plate so if we click on this button right here you can see how this is bringing this in, but it's bringing it in standing up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to rotate this by 90 degrees. So I'm gonna type in 90 degrees in this box, then I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click on the button for apply assembly attributes with the selected, and we wanna go ahead and check the box for rotation because that's the, that's the property that we want to apply to this plate. And so the one other thing I want to adjust is I want to go ahead and make sure that the insertion point for this plate is at the bottom center of the plate. And so what we want to do is we want to adjust this insertion point so that's on the bottom middle, or in this case, because we rotated it, I guess we want this to be on the center left. So that's because we had rotated this sideways 90 degrees. So we want this to be our insertion point because we wanna be able to place this on the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we're gonna leave this plate for a moment. Cause now what we wanna do is we wanna come over here and we wanna create an assembly to make up our wall. So we wanna click on the button for the assembly manager and that's gonna bring up the assembly dialog. And we're just gonna click on the plus button for a new assembly. And I'm gonna go ahead and say no to saving the current assembly. And for this new assembly, what we wanna do is we wanna call this framed wall. And so within our wall, we need to add two profile members, one for the ground and one, one for the bottom plate and one for the top plate. And then we need to add some components. So let's start by adding the profile members. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on the plus button and it's going to add a profile member. And so we have an option down here to either use the profile manager or the edit profile dialog or pick from model. Well, in this case, since we already have a copy of this over here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on the button for pick from model. We're gonna click on that bottom plate that we've already created. And we can call this bottom plate. So now what we have is we have an assembly made up of one bottom plate. And so now what we need to do is we need to click the plus button to add another assembly member. And in this case, we're gonna call this one the top plate. And so this has already brought in the plate that we have in here. So now what we wanna do on this one is we wanna add an up, down, offset. 
So in this case, let's say that we want our wall to be 10 feet tall. I'm going to set my up down offset to 10 feet. You can see how now in my preview, I have a base plate and a top plate inside of my assembly. So if I was to add this now, you can see how that's going to bring in a base plate and a top plate. So now what we need to do is we need to set this up and if you wanted to put like two plates on the bottom or on the top you could definitely do that but what we need to do now is we need to add the vertically repeating members that are in here. So in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to add them as components inside of our model. So to do that I'm just going to go ahead and draw one of them. So I'm just going to draw a little rectangle and we're going to call this 1.75 Whoops. and then we'll just close this in. And so what I want to do is I want to double click on this, I want to right click on it, and I want to make it a component. And we'll just call this Vertical Framing Member. So now we have a component in here that's going to be our Vertical Framing Member. And I'm going to go ahead and click inside of that, double click inside of it, and I'm just going to push pull that to the height of my wall. So to the bottom of my top plate. So now what I have in here is I've created a member that's going to be the right height to go inside of this wall. So now what we need to do is we need to add that to our framed wall assembly. So to do that, just click on the button for component and click the plus button. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick from model and click on this vertical framing member that we've added in here. So now what that's going to do is that's going to add these inside of our assembly. So if I was to click on this and then click on the button for apply assembly attributes, you can see how that's going to go ahead and that's going to bring those in. And so there's a couple of things we need to do about this because first of all, it's not in at the right height and second of all, it needs to be rotated. So to start off, we're going to set the rotation of these to 90 degrees. So, and you can see how I keep this selected so I can just click the apply button and I can see the change that's being made. And so this is being brought in right now and it's being brought in based on the center point of this member. And so what we need to do is we need to set this so that it's over a little bit and it's up a little bit so that our spacing is right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start off by adjusting our setback. We're, we're gonna apply our left right setback of two and seven eighths inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in here two and seven eighths. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply this. And so you can see how what that did is this move this over two and seven eighths inches. And so now what it needs to do is it needs to have an up down offset as well. And you can see how what I'm doing is I'm just using these offsets in order to place this object. So this needs to go up seven eighths of an inch. So if I click on that, you can see how this is now aligned properly. And then finally, I need to set a start setback of the width of this piece of wood. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in a value of the width of this piece of wood, which is 1.75 inches. So you can see how when I apply that, now my wall extrudes this top and bottom plate and it also automatically places these pieces of wood. And so let's say, for example, that I wanted this to have a stud spacing of maybe like 18 inches or something like that instead of 8 feet. So I would just type in a value of 18 inches. And now if we apply this, you can see how this is going to create a wall with a stud spacing of 1 foot 6 inches between each stud. And so now let's say that we wanted to add this to an entire complex house, maybe something like this. Well, all we would have to do is we would just have to select the perimeter and then click on this button right here for build along path and you can see how this actually creates this framed out wall that goes along the path. And so there are some things that you'd have to do maybe with like the junctions and the corners if you wanted this to have a square piece of framing in here. But overall this is a really easy way to create a quick framed wall inside of Profile Builder. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I will link to a playlist of additional tutorials teaching you how to use Profile Builder. So those will be in the notes down below this video. If you haven't gotten a copy of Profile Builder, you still want to check it out, um, make sure you check out my Black Friday deals page at the SketchUp Essentials com slash Black Friday to see if it's still on sale. So if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.